Good afternoon. This is Hercules. Uh, or you can call me Hercules Oteno. Today, I want us to have a conversation again. I know uh, last week we've had, so we had so one conversation on how to do uh, pre-approval. But I now wanted to come down to it and then we talk about loan application. What is loan application? Just like the name saying application. This is whereby when you, you thought of buying a house, before you contact anybody or start doing anything, you must have an application. Your information has to be put somewhere and somebody has to check if you can really qualify or not. Well, the loan application. This loan application has three, uh, it's divided into three. The first one, it's your name. It's going to be your name, your address, and your phone number. The second one is going to be your employer, how long you've worked there, their phone number. And then the third one is going to be your assets. The assets is where it is now. They, here, that's where it includes uh, your 401k, um, any money you have in a, in, in a bank. All that are going to be included there. Well, why do you want to have the application? Because you know the information that uh, since you're planning to buy a purchase a, a property, the government has to have some information about you. So how do you get that? The first thing I would recommend is to go to your bank. You know, you put your money there. So they need also to borrow you that money at least to buy something with it. Maybe sometimes you've not gone to the law, I mean to your bank. You can go to a loan officer. But I would say something there. Try to go to a reputable loan company. Why am I saying a reputable loan company? S some companies might come up and uh, some of them might start having that weird stuff. For example, somebody wants to tell you that you want to make a document for you. No, 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 don't allow that. Or wants to use uh, something that is not uh, accepted in the loan industry. So you got to be very careful. Normally, try to have a second opinion if you're not understanding something. So what happens when the loan company has already taken your information? What they will do is they will run your credit. I think sometimes back we spoke about the credit. This is how they determine whether you can qualify or not. After that, they will want to see your pay stub. Because for you to purchase a property, you must be able to uh, pay for it. So that's how they're going to be wanting to see your pay stubs. They will also want to see your two-year W-2s. If it's like, for example, uh, now this is 20, uh, uh, 2020, they'll want to see 2019 and 2018. Some of them might even ask for 2017. So you should put those ones together. Another thing is they'll want to see if it's a bank, they might pull your bank statement from your account. Or if it's a loan company, they, they will want to see uh, a printout of a bank statement. And then also, if you have some assets, like a 401k, we discussed that, that you had a four, four I mean, the, the third level, whether you have a 401k or other assets, they'll want to see the statement for that. So these are stuff that you have to prepare. Let's just back up a little bit. Number one, you will need your pay stub. Two, pay stub. That is one month's pay, pay stub. Number two, you will need W-2s. I gave an example like if 2020, you will give, you will need 2019, 2018, and 2017. You will need bank statement. You will need a 401k if you have or you have other asset statement. And if you are going to put a down payment, they'll also want to see where you are getting that money from. In the loan language, they call it, they'll want to source where you're getting the loan. Because what banks don't want is 
you're going to borrow down payment and then you're using down payment for getting your loan again. Uh-uh. But there's also another way you can do that. There is also what we call down payment assistance program. This is being offered by Minnesota State. So your loan officer should be able to, and should be conversant with this. I would ask them this before I even go ahead and do anything. If they are not conversant with it, I would think twice about them. Because if they don't know that, then probably they are not very professional in their, in, in their, in their career. Well, after now you've got all this together and you've met with the loan officer, the loan officer will pull the credit, you already discussed that, and then also they will tell you how much you can be able to purchase. Because what matters is your purchasing power. How much is your monthly payments? I spoke sometimes, if you go back to my previous video, I was talking about going to a grocery store and getting with the money that you know I'm going to buy this much. That's how now you are going out there and meet with the loan or with a with realtor to go out and purchase a property because you know how much you've been approved for. So you can go out and shop for the home. But there's something I want to always stress so much and I will always stress it every day. Please, when you're going out there with your realtor, you don't have to buy as much as you are fully approved for. Let's say, for instance, you are approved for 500000 Do you really need 500000 house? That's a question you can ask yourself before you can move on. Don't go for what you can't afford. The fact that you are approved for that much doesn't mean that you can be able to purchase that, or, I mean to afford that. Because in the end of the day, everything will go, but when the dust settles, you are the one who's paying the mortgage. Don't find yourself in a situation whereby you're in a roller coaster and now you have to pay this mortgage and you can't afford it. Then you get frustrated, it starts affecting you, it affects your family and it affects everybody around you. I've seen it. In this career of mine, I've seen it. People who have been in a situation that they can't afford what they were approved for. Because sometimes some people do overtime. Maybe this year you worked so much and you made good money. Maybe next year you will not. So you have to make sure that whatever you are approved for, the bottom line comes, are you able comfortably to pay what you are going for? This is an honest opinion I'm going to give you. And I don't want you to go out there and then you're going to say that, you know what, I ended up with something I didn't like. I know how it feels. And if you are not serious about it and you don't want to pay attention to it, you'll find yourself in there. And when you find yourself in there, it's really, really bad. So my advice is make sure you do your due diligence and make sure you go for what you can afford. If you're a family and uh, you're together, sit down and discuss that. Look at your finances. See if it's something that you might be able to want to do. I like being honest with everybody because it's very important for you. Remember, this is a financial decision you are making. And if you make a wrong one, you will have to have the consequences. Otherwise, my name is Hercules again, Otieno, uh, or you can call me Hercules the Realtor. You can go to my YouTube. My YouTube is Hercules Otieno, or you can go to my Facebook. We can meet there, we can chat. Hercules the Realtor, or you can go to my Instagram, which is Hercules the Realtor. I'm also on Twitter. You can tweet me there. My number again is 763-498-2650. And my email address is Hercules at HerculesTheRealtor.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for being with me. I hope to see you next week.